God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Seal us. Though I'm bruised in the battle, I stand still and continue to fight. Oh, still, though my burdens are heavy, I stand still because I know who's my life. So I'm asking you, Father. Get harder I stand still Cause I have faith in God
The dawn from heaven will break upon us to shine on those who live in darkness under the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Blessed are the sorrowful, for they shall find consolation. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave us a new birth into a living hope. One thing I ask of the Lord, it is that one thing that I speak, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, and to see him in his circle, things beyond things beyond more hearing, things beyond more imagining, have all been prepared by God for those who love him. In the favor, in his favor there is life. Tears may linger to nightfall, but rejoicing comes in the morning. We all know that God's judgment is just. Do you imagine that you will escape the judgment of God? Our help is in the name of the Lord, make of heaven and to earth. The souls of the righteous are in God's hand. No torment will touch them. They are at peace. Good morning, friends. We have gathered this morning to celebrate the life and the service of our dear sister and elder, mother and friend, Barris Rowe. We're here to give up that for her life, all the great work that she's done in this earth. Let me take the opportunity to welcome us to Lord for United Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have our opening prayer by Reverend Denver Smilly as he come to give us the open prayer. No sad. I want to begin by extending words of condolences from Pastor William and Reverend Elizabeth, whom I spoke with this morning. They send their condolences to the family and to the church, and they bring my own condolences and that of Cynthia, who is here with me today. Let us pray and prosper in prayer. God of life, God of hope, God of light, you are God who is from everlasting unto everlasting. You are God who has no end. And nothing catches you by surprise. You see all things. You know all things. Only you, O oh God, even knows the deepest secrets of our hearts. You are the creator of all that has life. You created all that we see and all that we don't see. You are God who can never be told what to do because God, what you do is always right. In the midst of pain and anguish, the midst of disappointments of life. We come, we come, God, to you, the God who knows how to hold us family with your warm hands. We come to you, the God who has assured us that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We come to you, the God of life, who has assured us that in you we are going to find not just life, but everlasting life. So we come in hope. Father, we come to celebrate. 
to celebrate faith, to celebrate tenacity, to celebrate our God consistency as it was evident in the life of your servant, Sister Joan. She didn't just proclaim you as Lord and Savior, but she saved you and she embodied you in all that she said and in all that she did. And we come. We come, God, with confidence and boldness because we are celebrating a life, a life well lived, not just for you, but for many others, oh God, because she understood it, that it doesn't pay to please you and fail to touch lives of those around us. So, God, as we pause in your presence, we declare that we too who remain alive today can lead our lives and reflect Christ in all that we do and in all that we say. Remind us, O oh God, that our lives one day will come to an end here on earth. But not for those who have placed them in your hands. Because the scriptures remind us that in life and in death, we are still the Lord's. Thank you for the life of your servant. Thank you, God, for that which she has left behind. A rich legacy of faith. Even in the lowest moments of our life, she still found time to worship. Even in the most trying time of our life, she still lifted her voice and said, I know that my Redeemer is. And we pray that God, as we render worship and praise to you today, we are coming in the same spirit, knowing that God, you are not our Lord as is faithful, and God, you are able to do exceedingly beyond what we can ever think and imagine. Save for us with your presence. Cause your very light to shine upon us. Grant us your peace, of oh God, when our reflections on the transitioning of your our loved one becomes unbearable. Remind us. Remind us that you are here. Spirit of the living God, you are the only one who is able to comfort us at this time. We pray that your comforting presence will be felt in this place. We pray, God, that you save us with your presence. We come against all forces that are not of God and declare that God, the manifestation of your power and your grace will be experienced throughout this worship experience. We resist every spirit of confusion and declare, God, that peace, peace will reign, the peace that God himself offers. Take us through this worship experience. Give us a new song. Give us a new word. Give us a new encounter. Give us a new experience. Forgive us, O oh God, of all that we've left and done and all that we've done which is not right before you. Accept us now in your presence. Let your will be done. Your will alone, O oh God, and may we remember at the end of the day to give you the praise, the glory, the honor, the worship, and the adoration. This message and others we ask through Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Reverend. I always use a song that says, To God be the glory. Great things he has done. We now listen to the first lesson. comes to us from Psalm 46. It will be read by Karen Rowe, Blessed Beings, Grandchildren. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, therefore will we, we not fear, though the earth be change, and though the mountains be shaken, and so the heart of the Though the waters there uproar be troubled, though the mountains tremble with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. 
she shall not be moved. God will help her, and that right early. The nations rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his wounds, the earth held it. Jehovah of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the work of Jehovah. What desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to seize us to the end of the earth. He bringeth the bow and the foot, the spirit and surrender. He burdeneth the chariots and the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Jehovah of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the reading of God's holy word. Bless the Lord. We go to the first tribute for the morning. It will be done by Sister Pauline, or by the church. Sister Pauline, and this is a sister of the deceased. Hallelujah. Amen. And when I say a sister mother. and mother, mother. hear the children over there say mother and soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So Sister Pauline will give her tribute. But before she do that tribute, we'll go to the song. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me.
in the name of Jesus. We pay tribute to a woman of volume, a dear friend, a church sister, and a child of God. Tribute for the late Mrs. Virus Rowe, other called Joan, Juju, and Kibini. I have known Sister Joan since 1972. When we met at the Revival Church in the River Betel, she was living at her grandmother's house. At that time, Sister Drone wasn't a Christian then, but in the year 1978, she gave her life to the Lord and have always said that me being a Christian have impacted her life in wanting to become a Christian. We then became pilgrims and church sojourners. In 1978, Sister Joan started to attend the Low River United Church, where she got baptized on Good Friday morning by Reverend Dr. Colin Cohen in 1979. Sister Joan then became a member of the Low River United Church up to the time of her death. She loves the Lord, a very powerful prayer warrior, good visitation person. I even pause here to say that I miss her more than everybody in this church because she was my visitation partner. I always said, Sister, you want to go in there, and she's ready. She always called me, Sister, call in, go in there, and I am ready. We always journey together. We always, she always visits the sick and shakti. You could call her anytime and she would be ready for the task assigned. She was a believer in God. She was a member of the choir. She was a member of the Women's Fellowship, leader of the prayer group, member of the singing group, she sung on the praise team. She was the leader of the evangelism committee when I, Pauline Watson, picked up the mantle from her in 2011. Elder for the Redland District and late became the elder of the Low River District up to the time of her death. Today is very hard to say goodbye to such a person. A wonderful person she was, a true worshiper and no nonsense person. She always speak the truth. She was not afraid to tell you the truth. You would hear her say, if you vex, you vex. And if you're pleased, you're pleased. As so do ones here, we have to tell them the truth. Yeah. Sometimes we spend so much time together, just singing, praying, talking, and having our cup of coffee. <laughs> she loves to cook and bake. When I told her I'm coming to her house, my rice and peas, and not mention the fried chicken would always be ready for me. She was a kind person, never said no. We shared our joys and our sorrows together. She was one of my dearest and closest friends. On the 11th of December, 2022, the Rose family were in charge of worship. Sister Joan was in church. 
But little, little did we did to know that it would be her last Sunday with us in this church. She lost rally, crusades, workshops, harvests, and she loves to give, especially to the children at our annual Christmas dinner. Her favorite songs back then was, the great physician now is near, the sympathizing Jesus. Jesus came to die on our Calvary, learning to lean on Jesus across the bridge. And what a stranger here I'm going on. There is a paradise of rest where only saints in Martha reign. The chorus said, meet me there, meet me there. At the end of our journey, meet me there. All the best is yet to come. And the last one. When my king shall call for me, may he find me in my place. Sister Joan silently went on the 15th of January, 2015, to be with her master when her journey is all over and her battle. This one. Even when the storms of life are raging, she was happy down inside. She saw the light bulb coming to take her safely home. She got the feeling in her heart that it is to All the
that's when all of life is over. Our journeys ended. But the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Our second lesson comes to us from Psalms 27 with the Don by Patricia Davy, family friend. that you are gone. 
but we will smile because you have lived. We could close our eyes and pray that you will come back, but we will open our eyes and see all that you have left. Our hearts could be empty because we cannot see you, but we, we will be full of the love that you have shared with us. We could turn our backs on tomorrow and live yesterday, but we will be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. We could remember you and only you. We could remember you and only that you are God, but we will cherish you and the memory and let it live on. We could cry and close our minds, be empty and turn our backs. But we will do what you would want us to do. Smile, open our eyes, love and go on. The New Living Translation of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 reads, I remember your genuine faith, for you shared the faith that first failed your grandmother, Lewis, and your mother, Elise. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. And as your grandchildren and great-grandchildren, we will continue to carry this genuine faith with us also. Thank you. but I'm just going to. Um, grandma was a person who uh, always made sure I ate whenever I came to Jamaica. I was full at all the time. She could cook some good fried chicken, some good dumpling. She was always singing funny, whatever she said, it always made me laugh. And I'm just going to miss her. Jesus. For those who may have many of you might recognize me, for those who don't know who I am, my name is Sophia, I'm the eldest child for Virus Row. I'm 22nd, I'm here in Sir Gordon. We we don't say um second or half brother, he is a brother, despite his not mom sound biological child, but his dad's child. What can I say about my mom? I didn't prepare a speech because I want to be genuine. A virtuous woman, a woman of love, a woman who tells us all, a woman who loves us, a woman who loves community, and most of all, a praying woman. I asked my friend, uh, Patricia Davis, to read the scripture, Psalms 27. And the main reason I did that. I can remember growing up as a child, we would sit at the bedside. My dad was a Christian. My dad would be in the bed on Sunday morning, mom gets, gets us up, and all three of us would sit at the bedside. And we had to learn to read Psalms 27, not only to read it, but remember it without looking, it, looking at the Bible. And I remember, you know, having near his hand, because each time he comes to me, he's trembling, and I have to hug him and say, okay, you can do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I say, you can do it. But mom, as you all know, a lovely woman, just by the turning out of, you know, the, the, the audience here, it tells who she is. I was privileged, and um, for those who may not know, so I live in the United Kingdom for the past 22 years. Um, I would say I would say as often as my brother. However, the Lord granted me, and I would say all things work together for them who love the Lord. The Lord knew that my mom, life and earth, would have been now. And he granted me the privilege and with the favor of God, the grace of God, not many more places are going to give you five months off and pay you. Not many more places. And I really appreciate that. My workplace allowed me to stay with mom uh, for five months up until last day I was here. And that five months, I tell you, is like a lifetime. 
Don't get me wrong. We argue. We hold each other. We pray together. We worship together. One of the, the moments that stands out with me is when um, Sister Sonia and Ro came by and we prayed that morning. And we prayed. Mom, I love you. You know what? <laughs> my sister, my brother reminded me when it happened on the Sunday. He said, sis, sorry, a couple days after, he said, sis, are you ready for this? So we're still in the UK. Because I kept not realizing on the video call, I kept doing this. Rubbing my head. That's just nerves. He said, sis, are you ready for this? I said, boy, I don't know, you know. He said to me, listen, mom always said, you are the strongest one. You have to stand for both of us. And I really appreciate that God has given me the strength that I haven't mourned, cried, or break down. And I think of them to all twice. And it's just the grace of God. The main reason for this is that, one, living so far from mom, one of the things I would have regret, just to go back a bit, in December, my manager, keep pressuring me to not use the word pressure, but saying, I will lose my holidays if I don't take them, because I had 22 days left, and that was the last year. And I think, what am I going to do with, with, with my holiday? I'm going to take my holiday, and, um, and I'm not ready to go to Jamaica. Anyway, book two weeks off in January. At the end of December, something said to me, why not go to Jamaica? and take your grandson. My son has done it with a little boy there. That's my grandson. And the one that spoke earlier, that's my son. And something said, take the two weeks off. And let, you are the first child. Your mom has never met your grandson. Don't wait until mom and dad of the child take, you know, take him to see her. You take her. Take him. And I want and I want and I think, oh God, two weeks in Jamaica? No, not doing two weeks. No good to me. I could he help me. She interested said, no, you should go. Because he kept saying it. And you know what, church? Whether you believe it or not, I'm here. I didn't come from Mount Road. I booked my flight with my grandson and my niece who read the program. My son was like, I'm not ready yet, Mom. I don't want to go and see Grandma. Excuse me, my, my niece, she lives in London. All three of us spoke to come and see mom. I said to the mom, so I came with, you know, she's not 100%, let's go and see her. And all three of us spoke. But God knows best. Kai really did not get a chance to meet her in the real life. But I do hope and pray to God that, you know, we're human and that we will live a good life, a brother, a sister, continue to live a good life, rather, a godly life the grandchildren, and I do hope and trust that we live that life, that one day we will see her in heaven. God bless you.
and I really realized that I'm not, you say, yes, this is really it. She'll be going back with us for sure, but not home, but a different place. And that the Spirit said, prepare her for death. And just as how the Spirit said, prepare her for death, the song just came, the great physician now is there to sympathize in Jesus. And I started humming the song, because she was laying down with her eyes closed. And I started humming the song, and as I hum and I rock, and I rock and hum, and as I started rock and hum and rock her legs, she wanted to open the eyes, look at me and close, and I continued to have and watch the record and this goes up. And I said to my brother, and he was here as well, thanks be to God, because as my sister said, she was concerned about the whole of us. And God has actually given us the privilege to be there to actually see our help her through her transition. And as I watched the breath going up, I was there seeing as a gear come over this side because she was looking at me and I continued to watch until I realized she was making a pop the face and the breath replay up when I held her hand in church. And I, I held it to my chest and I squeezed it. And then I place my head and then I continue to rub and rock and sing until she eventually passed. And every time I think about it, I say thank you, Jesus. You know this little person that she was worried about her there. Because I was a dog out there who managed being in America and being in Portmore and then get the message. So I said thank you, Jesus. We work it out for us. I mean, she, I said, maybe she had prayed. And God answered her prayer. But my mother wasn't just a mother. She was my dear friend. She had to speak to my church family and extended family visitors. Sometimes my mother sues me with Sophia. <laughs> Sometimes she sues me with Gary. And you look at the That's how we actually live. Most of our church family go to try to dress a lie. Sometimes sugar keep the feet. I always talk about our sugar. Yeah, we must have a little bit of it. She met the life in the house lively. So the first thing I was going to pass away. I first I was here and trust me, sister Polly met the house be like TV was still there to keep the house alive. And sister Polly, I really appreciate it. The singing group, I'm gonna use this platform to say I really appreciate you guys. Because you came down and you bring back the good old days and rock the good old Grace Chillers with her. When I called her the following day, she said, Go and see you. I was here and I said, Oh, I'll go. She told me you guys were coming. And when I called her, I said, Yeah, man. And I said, You guys rock the good old Grace Chillers. She said, Yes. Man. So I said, You so just a mother, of course. <laughs> and I remember when her mother called her, I said, We're going to sing a song. And she said, No, man. That's why I asked her if she said how to make you guys. And she said, yes, and it was so good. And you know, it brings, the way how she, she, she spoke with me, it's like it brings joy to her heart. And singing group, but when she said, because that is here, she was supposed to be here, but that is somebody. Yeah, and they were there, and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you all for being here and for the love that you have shown her and for us when you see us on the road and in the church. But I know I try not to cry because she said don't cry before because she live a life, church. She live a life, not because of my mother. But you know that she live a life. You know? As I think it's in St. Matthew when the um said Matthew that's a let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father that is in heaven. She lived that life. And you know, I was touching here and I said, Look here. I know I always said to my mother, like, any dear him decide, say, this is it, you know, God are coming in. We said, kids, no. I was expecting her to be alive to see it. I said, kids, any dear here, God's hope, I know. If I was powerful more than me and so full of the past of me, what else was it? And we were praying. And the phone I said, So can it can it was a Christian helping us here in Long Month and I was here. That that girl was in America pray like crazy and we did not know. Yes. I was ashamed to be consistent. They said, I pray, I pray, I pray till I sweat. Same time, you know. And he said, in my business, who was watching me? He said, in my car. And I pray, 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 I pray,
referring that yes. the wife, the union, and the family, yeah, they will go home and continue to live that life. Thank you again. Thank you. Love you, mother.
reservation. At this time, my brothers will go to the offering and that same singing group that our dear sister Tonight spoke about earlier will be doing the musical. So we're going to ask the singing group to come at this time as we continue with the singing while the offering we receive. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. When you hear about um, Sister Joan and Jojo being a part of this singing group, this group was not just a singing group, it was what we call our social group. We had places together. You know, like sometimes we go somewhere and play games and all of that. Sometimes we find ourselves all over the place, like in the ocean and all of that. Always a part of this group. So it was not just a singing group, it was a friendship group. And um, prayer group, we would go all over the places praying for persons and having really breakthroughs. So brothers and sisters, honestly, Sister Jojo was really a part of us all and we have been together for over 30 years. So that's not yesterday. So we know it's not easy for anybody, but just bring us up as a group as we try to do what we need to do. In this life we are faced with problems, many valleys do go through. There are times of pain and sorrow, and the skies are always blue. Many times the wind is fearing, and the storm does have to go, but we need to hold on.
ask you this morning, are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood?
from praying. You said, God, you made no man. So we need to start get up them three o'clock in the morning again. Hmm? When the devil is hard at work. as I move you will never tell people about Jesus until you tell Jesus about people Amen. can I say it again you will never tell people about Jesus until you tell Jesus about people what am I saying to the church of God Let us start praying for ourselves and let us lift up our brothers and sisters are falling. Brothers and sisters are brothers and sisters that are struggling. Not until, not until we tell Jesus about people. Can you go and tell people about Jesus? My God, when I do that, friends, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the power to witness will fall upon us like the disciples in the upper room. Strongholds will be torn down. Doors must be open. That's what prayer does, you know. A tough situation there when you think that the door lock and you now open. Chanelin man go on in. Those midnight experiences teaches you how to pray. Ay ay ay. I say I should not sing and I try not to. Prayer changes things. Prayer opens doors. Tears down strongholds. My God. Mm. Mm. In the middle of the night, when my back gets the wall.
live. Proclamation speaks about preaching the word of God. Sharing salvation to the lost people in this world. She went up to them. That's what the text says. She went up to them. That does not speak about timidity. It speaks about someone who knows about what they're talking about. Somebody who has experienced a God that has healed and delivered and saved and sanctified a God who is a provider. She proclaimed it boldly. She went up to them. We talk about a thing called holy boldness. Yeah. And when you have a passion for the saving of souls, you will share the word of God. Never before. That's the next thing that Anna and Joe and taught us. The pastor asked us, where is this spirit of fear coming from? Because the word of God says that the righteous shall be as bold as a You ever hear the lion and meow yet? Huh? So you must know if you the lion or a moose. But God did not call us to be timid, huh? courageous, bold, forward, proclaim just say the Lord of hosts. When God speaks to you, move in the power of the Holy Ghost. Sad reality is that so we sit up for some people deliverance. Ouch. But God I'm going to allow you to pull up somebody else's deliverance and write somebody else's word. But when that happens, tell me how you feel. Can I talk to the church about The righteous shall be bold. Hmm? Boldness. She proclaimed boldly. But finally, She persevered patiently. I'm going to come down on this one. She was not well, but it never stopped her from doing the work of God. Hmm? The moments when she felt at her weakness or weakest. It never stopped her. She called for him. Pauline, let me pray. Even to the very point of death, she was still. For the last time I saw her, she called me with a very soft voice. She said, Come here. And I went and I sat beside her. She whispered to me. But I did not know it was her parting words. Even to the very end, she persevered. She never let go of God. Begin those moments, it drew her a little closer to God's unchanging. As I listen the night of her passing, and as I listen to the tributes today, I want to close with this. To my unsaved friends, the great physician now is here to heal our sin sick soul. Peace.
swooping hard to cheer. Will we hear the word? Will we hear the voice of Jesus, the sweetest name? Mighty God, sweetest name in heaven, seraphim song. Sweetest name on mortal tongue. Sweetest of oh blessed free heart. Oh, hear the voice. The great physician is here to heal broken bodies, minds, and spirit. Family, the great physician is very much here to heal that brokenness that you feel. Unsafe friends, the great physician is here to heal your sin sick soul. Those of us who feel sick, the great physician is here. The question is, will you access your services? But the fact is that is very much present. If you will just reach out, take hold, call the things that you need in your life into being. For healing your one, tell God, say, I heal your one. So we pray some very wide prayers. Pray for what you want. The Bible says, Ask and it shall be prayed for the want. But I will also pray for my unsafe friends. That God will stop by your homes. Love the name of Jesus. But the final verse says, His name dispels my guilt, fear. No other name could do it but the name of Jesus. Of all my soul delights to hear the charming name, sweetest name, surfing song, sweetest name. There was some sweetest of oh blessed. Three one. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus.
come now, wake up. The gift of your holy My God. I thank you. May the Lord continue to keep you. Let them turn to our feet. The light of God. The strength for our lives. Continue to challenge us, Almighty God. To come to a space of purity. Amen. Hallelujah. That Almighty God will find ourselves back at the altars of prayer at New City to pray consistently, but also proclaim you risen. Boldly. And as we do it to the very last breath leaves our body. Continue to challenge us. Continue to still our spirits. We pray for Christ Lord. Followed by a special request from the Mason's family, Desmond Richard Cousin. Followed by the other Short peace call in that order. Though Satan should offend, no charge is come. Hallelujah.
to all who have already said the truth. And for those who don't understand the talk, they don't say, mm hmm, <laughs> for the others. And so I endorse what the others say. But I also say to us, do not give up. Because if in those years you are impressed me as a genuine young Christian, we still have those people existing today. So let us search for them, let us pray for them, and don't give up on them.
Oh, 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 
one here and I have to at this back. I'm in my church. Everybody, so many more stuff. And that stereo system on her inside 
It was always pumping out mm -hmm. some tunes, which all the sheep would hear. Mm -hmm. Whether music was playing or not, my cousin was dancing. <laughs> Her formal education commenced at this school, Glory God age, and continued at Christiana Secondary School. Her ambition was to become a teacher. She always envisioned herself back and shoulder going off to school to educate the nation's youth. But unfortunately, that dream did not materialize. As Joan blossomed into adulthood, she became romantically involved with this handsome young man from the area, Anthony Rowe. Joan and Tony decided to become lifelong partners, so they tied the knot. The union produced three children, Gary, Sophia, and Anthony. The Rose worked as senior slave to enhance their quality of life and to ensure that their children acquired a better education than they did and God rewarded their efforts. They did achieve a better standard of living and their children, you see them over there? Gary, Antoinette, and Sophia. They made Joan proud. Church has always been an integral part of our life. And I said our life because Joan, Marley, who you buried, Marley, Paul, and I. I was the eldest. Huh? We grew up together, brothers and sisters, children. The same yard, the same house. We had to attend church whether we wanted to or not. Our grandparents saw to that, especially the um, grandmother. Grandmother. They inculcated in us the love of God's house and the love of God. Thank God for grand for God the grandparents. So when Joan finally committed her life to God, she just immersed herself into the church. Joan worked in many capacities in this church. And you have heard it? I didn't know what the people would say. The person would say, I just write what I do. Right? right? She immersed herself in the church. She worked in many capacities in this church. She was an elder for Lower River and Redland area. She was leader of the prayer group. John was a member of Women's Fellowship. She was a member of the praise team. She belonged to the singing group. And she was also on the evangelism team. She was also an active member of the choir. I know that from a long time. Joan was always visiting the elderly, the shut in, the sick. And she was always giving encouragement to whoever. She could give encouragement to. In whatever capacity she was asked to serve, she made herself available. Whatever was on the church's calendar of events, Joan participated. Whether it was rally, or crusade, or convocation, or synod. I might not be in this church, but I know about synod. Synod. And if her pastor asked her, along with others, to accompany, accompany him or her to another of the churches for which he is responsible, she would not be kind. She had to be ill to say no. Joan just enjoyed her salvation. Sometimes she would call me, you know, and she would say, P, 
You want to come in and come in and come in? All right, my parts are different, sure. All right, I'm in Manchester. She was always on the go for Christ. Even when her health began to fail, she would try to be at Sunday and fasting services, and she would be at elders meeting. Come down, and you're here to work. Can't stay and have to go to elders meeting, it's elders meeting, right? And it's fasting. My cousin was a loving. She was generous. She was diligent. She was caring. She was a very compassionate person. Admirable qualities for any human being. She cared for people. Nothing was too good. But they really fast. <laughs> Nothing was too good for Joanne to give away or to share with others. Prayer was one of the things she liked to give away. If she visited you, I don't know about all of you, but if she visited, she was going to pray with you. If Joan comes to her house, she's not leaving. I let you pray. Some of you might have heard, I don't know, the older ones, about the telepath. Are you telepaths? Maybe you don't know about telepaths. I don't know if it's better, I think what I call it, it's a very part. But the part, that kind of part, this a huge part, was like the Ellie family home. And we live right near the road. That was the part we home. Because, you see, any time, given time, we are full. Nobody uses the road anymore. Everybody walks through. Yeah, and they say, give me beside them, bread of wind, and they sit up. And nobody moving until the food was shared. Sometimes you had to share in mug. We got so many. And when I say mug, but little children, you know, inner men, inner men, mug? Yeah, sometimes we had to share in the inner men. Sometimes we, the children, sometimes we didn't get any other food. Sometimes we didn't get any other food. You see on Friday, like people who we don't get any sometimes. Because we are poor, right? So sharing with others was one of the many lessons Joan learned from her grandparents, from a child. I guess she needed the words. Give and it shall be given you good measure. Press down, share together, and run it over. Shall be given to your bosom. No one stopped by George's house and left hungry. She's cooking. She'll get a plate of food. Or she likes to pick. She'll get a piece of food. Or you get a piece of food. I don't get in and more of a coffee and a slice of poor bread. Right? Whatever she had, she was always giving it. And I don't think she believed in casting her bread from the waters. Keep your tails in the middle of the But she would find it after many days. And the Bible says give up worship to sin and also to eat. So finish. The one that was like the fourth of God. She was like the port so much, so much I could talk about my husband. She was like the port of all her ships in distress. Wherever help was needed, there was no one. She came to the rescue. She was a total strength to us all. During her grandmother's illness, Joan was always here to hear to help Uncle Willie, Shirley, and Mary to take care of her grandma. When her father took sick, it was Joan, dear to her glory and darkest. With. When a woman took sick, there was Joan to help now. When my mother took sick and couldn't help herself, it's Joan I received.
resorted to. So what? And she would find herself of succeed. And she would help. And whenever she could help, she found somebody to help. And when I took my mother, when I had my mother was a skilled wife, or my skilled wife, right? And when I fell and I broke my brakes, I tell you the truth. God's work. He does his work. But if I had a trouble, I would beg her. Um, 
your daughter drawn to us. That you instilled in her your love. And that with your love she loved so many, gave so generously, served so willingly. It is that same love by which you have now called her to her final resting home. From the toil and the tribulation of this life into the heaven of bliss. We thank you for those who remain her children and grandchildren, her siblings, all those who knew her well, who served with her, her good friends and colleagues in ministry. They remain here to reflect upon the quality of her life, to thank you for the gift of her and to continue the tradition that she began. We pray that you would surround her family with loving kindness and tender mercies. That you would be their rock as in a weary land and their shelter as in the time of storm. Provide for their every need. Hold them together in your loving care. Be their source of blessing and of inspiration. Provide for every need that they would supply them with all they need for a full and fruitful life. Lord, there are going to be moments when they think back on the life a mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother, a sister, and they will wonder, where is she? What's going on in her life now? In those moments, remind them that you have called her home to rest from her labor. That you have called her home to peace, perfect peace. That you have called her home to a life of fellowship with you, with all the saints of all ages, God, God, wonderful. And in those words, assure them, O oh Lord, that she looks down with a smile on her face, with gratitude in her heart, with love for them. Prayer constantly, still be prayed that every single one of them would come to you, to know you, whom to know his life. Dry their tears, give them strength. Hold them together in the bond of fellowship. May they care for one another, and particularly the young ones. May they shelter them, may they point them to you, the source of life. That would bring great joy to heaven as joy looks down. We pray, O oh God, that those who are sick in the family would find healing from the great physician. For those who are sad will find comfort. For those who are broken in spirit will find healing. For those who have lost their way will find their way back home. Bless this family. Bless the church. This glory of the United Church where she served so well. Where she was such a tower of strength, such a cornerstone. They must now continue ministry without her. We pray that you would bless them, Lord, and bless the ministry of this church of which John was such a great member. May the minister, the board of elders, the members of the evangelism team on which he served, the choir, the praise team, and all those who serve in one ministry or the other, may know your comfort in this hour. And to you, oh Lord God, we give all the praise, all the glory. To you, we give all the honor because you are Lord. You will lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving for a life well lived. Pray, God, that you surround us now. In Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. 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 Amen.
God or the kind of living moment. Let us pray. Gracious God, by your power, you give us life. And in your love, you are giving us new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust the virus to your safekeeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and to bring us all to a joyful resurrection and the glory of your eternal kingdom. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual continue to shine upon her. Amen. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the blessed Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. I ask that you listen very, very, very carefully and very keenly to the instructions that I am about to give to us. For those of us who are seated in the aisle, on the
and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be brought to life. Do not be afraid. I am the first and I am the last, says the Lord, and I am the living one. I was dead and now I am alive forevermore. Jesus said, because I live, you too will live. He also said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever has faith in me shall live, even though he dies. And the one who lives and has faith in me shall ever die. We have entrusted our sister virus to God's merciful keeping. We now commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the shore and certain hope. Resurrection in Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who died, was buried, and rose again for us, and is alive and reigns forevermore. Amen. Amen. As we lift our voices together in singing the hymn, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be, we invite the workmen to seal the vault. Love could only bring again 
for granted when to hear your voice was just a call away. What I'd give for just some time to say the things that slip my mind. There's so much now I'd really like to say. But I can never go back when we did the things we did back then. I'll store those precious memories in my mind. I'll take what you've instilled in me. I'll try to be all I can be and walk the path. That you have left behind. I sure miss you. Life will never be the same with you not here. Each passing day has brought much pain. But with God's grace, my strength remains. I sure miss you. Heaven sweeter with you against principalities and powers. Follow me, 